Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pray First Conversation with Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. It's so good to have you guys. Hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag share. Get out on your page. This is an interactive conversation, which means we can talk to one another, whether you are live, whether you recorded. If you will drop a comment, if you'll drop a question, if you will interact with the chat screen, uh, I, if I see the notification, I will respond. I will say hello. I will pray for you. I will do whatever that uh Whatever that requires. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Tasha. Good morning, Brenda. Uh, good morning, Barbie. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys. Hi, Daryl. What's going on, man? We're talking about being ready for the return of Christ or being ready for our return to Christ. One way or the other, we're returning or he re he's returning. Uh, there will come a day, there will come a generation when uh, that generation will not die, but they will be changed. All of us will be changed. That's that should be a big comfort to everybody that we're not going to stay the same. Reason being is you're going to get a brand new, refreshed body. It's going to be changed. It talks about when the Lord returns and uh, those who are dead will uh, go first, and then those of us who remain will be caught up in a moment. It also says that we will be changed. We're going to be getting a new, brand new body, one that does not deteriorate, one that does not uh, depreciate one that does not let's get a little more uh, common terminologies here uh, ache grow old um, have diseases get sick have an immune system need an immune system uh, whatever uh, ailment your body has is going to be per perfected it's going to be like God intended it it's going to be God like the way God created it when he was in the garden it just leads me back to thinking about the not today satan uh, series and how diabolos was so crafting and so cunning that and so stealthy that he convinced adam and eve that the person who put them in the garden of perfection was bad it's just good morning brooke good morning kimmy good morning everybody it's good to see all of you guys out there good morning uh how you doing mike how you doing audra what's going on um so preparing making a plan having Having a plan, having a lifestyle. Let me. There's some. There's something I want to look up and I want to share with you that's completely not on my notes. That I want to to just. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to read it to you. Matthew chapter twenty four. Everybody, uh, do you know what Blue Letter Bible is? BlueLetterBible.org is a, a Bible app that you can go to. And you can read the Bible in all kinds of uh, different versions and such. There's also Bible Gateway. Uh, Bible Hub, too. Bible Hub's not as good. Bible Gateway is probably my favorite after Blue Letter Bible. And, and they probably interchange a little bit. I want you to look for Matthew 24. And then we're going to scroll down. I'll say scroll down. If you've got your book Bible, you can flip there. Um, to verse 45. I want to read this because I don't know why I want to read this. I have notes here. He keeps doing me like this, doesn't he? Tracy and Jackson, man, here we go. So being prepared, being ready, this just goes along with that. He just gave it to me when I sat down here. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Okay, anytime you're reading scripture, you need to ask, where am I and where is he? I am the servant in this story. He's asking a question. Who is then a faithful, hashtag faithful? Who is a wise, hashtag wise? Who, who is a faithful, wise servant? Whom his master, now who's the master in the story? That's going to be God. Go ahead and tag your friends in this as well and Post this out on your page. Share this out. Make sure people are seeing it right now. Trying to get, get them here live. It's, it's just a different dynamic live. Those of you watching it is recorded. I mean, it's, you know, it's the same powerful stuff. It's the scripture. His word will not return void. It will accomplish what he sends it to accomplish. Uh, but try to tag them into the room. Who then is a faithful, wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? In due season, there are seasons of life. Blessed, everybody hashtag blessed. How many of us could use an installment of blessed in our lives? 
Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, find so doing. Find so what doing? Feeding the household, being wise, being faithful. When the master comes back, blessed is that, that servant by the master when he comes back and he finds him feeding. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Well, yes, I love you. No, no, Peter, do you love me? You know, I, you know that I do. Then feed my sheep. It is so important that at some point in your faith practice that you pivot from consuming to feeding from 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 eating to feeding peter do you love me jesus would say well of course i love you that's lip service peter peter do you love me i love you lord peter that that's 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 lip service that's religion peter do you love me if you love me feed my sheep who then is a faithful, wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, finds him so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, here, come, come here, come here, come here. If that evil servant, notice he didn't say that bad servant, that uh, lazy servant, that false servant. He calls him evil. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants. In other words, you can hurt Jesus' father's children by beating them by harming them, by hurting them, by being unloving towards them. If you start beating each other, ah, he's not coming back today. I'm just going to beat these fellow servants. I'm just going to judge my fellow servants. I'm just going to uh, be unforgiving towards them. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, listen to this, begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. In other words, consume for their own personal well-being. Consume for their flesh, consume, you know, this is my life, I work hard for the money, I'm going to consume it, I'm going to use it, I'm going to build my life's treasures here on earth, and scripture indicates that where your treasure is, there's where your heart will be also, that's why a lot of our hearts are not towards heaven, a lot of our hearts are so here on earth that we, we struggle, we scrape, we claw, we beg for uh, moments of life to, to continue staying here, I don't want this to be come across wrong to those of you who may not understand, but this is not my home. This is not where I'm from. This is not where I want to stay. My heart is 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 in my family. My heart is in loving our church. My heart is in loving you here at Pray First. My heart is in um developing organizations outside of the church that can reach people who will not allow the church to reach them with the same love of Jesus, such as Destiny Center, uh, that can interact with uh, community and governmental organizations and do things that uh, can help love people and help people with services uh, that the church cannot for legal and financial reasons and, and for people who will not allow the church to even minister in their life. My heart is, is for those things and those people and, and those activities, but it's because there's something in, in, inside of me that is switched when the Holy Spirit come into my life and I'm saved and I'm born again that wants to feed his sheep, that wants to express my love and devotion to God, not in a song. I mean, I do that. I worship with my songs. I worship with my clapping. I worship by closing my eyes. But when Jesus says, Doug, do you love me? I don't want to just say, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. When Jesus says, Doug, do you love me? I don't want to just sing, 
uh, oceans. When when Jesus says, Doug, do you, do you love me? I don't want to just, you know, sing uh, whatever the song is on the weekend. When Jesus says, you know, do you love me? And when the master looks at me, his servant, I want him to say, you know what? You, you have fed my sheep. You have, you have, you love me. You didn't just sing about loving me. You, it, you did something loving towards me. You, you fed my sheep. Doug, don't, don't get so captured and trapped in thinking about uh, being right. I'm not commanding you to be right. Doug, you can be wrong. Matter of fact, Doug, there's so many things you're wrong in that you don't, you don't even know it. You don't even realize it, Doug. But you're on the wrong side of the argument. You're on the wrong side of the, the thought process, Doug. Uh, there's a way that seems right to man, Doug. But in the end, it, that way leads to death. But, but Doug, don't, don't stress about that. I'm not commanding you to be right. Doug, I'm not, I'm not commanding you uh, to, <laughs> to get your opinion across. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not commanding you to, to convince people. I'm not commanding you uh, to, to judge people or to point things out that's wrong in people's lives. And Doug, I'm not commanding you to discipline my children. Those are my children. I'm not commanding you to beat them, hit them, or do anything. Doug, the only thing I'm commanding you to do is to feed them, to love them. I'm commanding you to love them, not be right. Um, not, not even change them, not convince them, not bring them over to your side. Doug, I'm commanding you to love them. And you can love them just like you are, and you can love them just like they are. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, consumption, consuming, consuming. It's very difficult for me to, and here's the bad parts of me, the parts that evidently doesn't love Jesus or the judgmental parts, the, the, the dirty parts I don't like about me is watching people live their lives in total consumption of the world around them, but never contributing back. That bothers me tremendously. It shouldn't because I'm not commanded to uh, to keep score or to watch or to, you know, but I, but I know the blessing that comes, number one, when you do something for someone else or you serve on a church team or you do something for a neighbor, you do something for a family member. I know the person that receives the blessing gets a lot, but boy, something inside a follower of Jesus, it's like food for their soul. It's it changes everything when you give your life for something bigger than your own life. When, when you're not just trying to buy this or that or have this or that or make sure your family can go here and do that or when you're not so focused on that, something, something godlike happens in laying down your life for someone else or giving up your time, your energies, your monies, your efforts. Um, you know, having not just a monetary budget but having a a schedule budget where you say no to a lot of things so you can say yes to some right things and some other people and I just think that um, I just think that I think it's a sign I think it's uh, an indication of many and few I really believe that he says Woe to the evil servant who says in his heart, my master's delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware. <coughs> and he will cut him into two pieces and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites and there shall be weeping of gnashing of teeth. In other words, when, blessed is the servant when the master comes, finds you doing the master's work. And I guess that's what the Lord wanted me to say to you guys today. Um, can I appeal to you one more time? Find a way to, to feed the sheep. Um, something that we do, something that I do, something that we do that is off the charts deception is when something gets in our hand, we keep it. Like everything that comes to us, we keep. Like, I worked hard for this money. It's mine. I'm keeping it. This blessing is mine. I'm keeping it. The time is mine. I'm keeping it. 
the spouse is mine, I'm keeping it. The family is mine, I'm keeping it. And everything that kind of gets in our hands is kind of like our hands, our life is like the black hole. If we get it, we're keeping it and, and we're consuming it. When you look at throughout Scripture and it talks about blessings and things that are given or handed or in your hand, a whole lot of the times it's talking about those things as being seeds. And in those seeds are the potential to multiply and grow and do bigger things. But if a farmer constantly purchases the seeds and then cooks them and eats them themselves, uh, there's no return, there's no harvest, there's nothing planted. Um, the potential is, um, it goes unknown, it, it goes unrealized. I guess that's the way to put it. The potential in our seed goes unrealized. So I want to encourage you, one of the ways to know that you're a follower of Jesus is that you feed his sheep. That if the master were to return, he would find you feeding his sheep, that you wouldn't be consuming all the seed, you'd be planting seed, uh, you'd be distributing seed, you'd be a person of character who'd gone through tests of destiny like Joseph to realize that, you know, daddy bowing down's cool and mama bowing down to me's cool and my brothers bowing down to me's cooler and my sisters bowing down to me and all this influence and all this power, that's all fantastic, that's all cool. It was the dream I had when I was younger to be this, to be that, to have this, to have that. But what's better than the dream is the destiny, and the destiny is always, as Joseph found out, uh, to save the lives of millions of people. That's our job, and we can save the lives of millions of people. And going back to that seed analogy and that food analogy, uh, you don't have to change the whole world. You can change somebody's world, and you can do it right now. No one has to see it. No one has to know it. No one has to know who did it. But every single one of you listening could do something for someone. They would never forget. And you could do it today. Let me just give you a quick example, and I want to pray for you and let you go. Uh, as my wife's been hurting really bad in, in this back situation that she's been going through, and you've been hearing us talk about, you've seen a hundred people thousand people praying for us and all this stuff and I've been sick and we missed you know the weekend and all these different things um, there have been people who have just stepped up and just sent a message many of you brought us food just just feeding us I mean we're gonna come out of this like 80 pounds larger sent us flowers sent flowers, messages. Um, you want to hear something crazy? Local hospital offering 100% um, health care. <laughs> <laughs> just do what? Hospital just offering 100% health care? Um, friends in doctor's offices and in chiropractic offices and in neurological offices and in general practitioner offices and in, uh, you know, just constantly there on the phone with medical advice and technical advice and, 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 and then cards just coming in the, in the mail just, you know. Here's why I say that. <clears throat> we will never forget that. That's world changing. Life changing stuff. And you could have come and sang a thousand weekends in our auditoriums. 
You could come and sing a thousand weekends at our church online. You could come and, you know, memorize a thousand scriptures and, and share a thousand messages and bring a thousand visitors. But the message I'll always remember <clears throat> is when you fed your father's sheep. I grew up with the same pastor my whole life. He's still my pastor today, Ken Bradley. And I, I heard him preach from the time I came out of the nursery till today. And the message I remember the most is when he came and helped put a roof on, on our family's house. I remember seeing him put on gloves. I remember thinking, oh, pastors work. Pastors can pick up shingles and scrape roofs and help, you know, put on a new roof. That, <clears throat> do you love me, Peter? I just keep hearing that. Feed my sheep. So some of you don't know what big impacts you're making by doing little things and touching the person beside you in front of you. The, the way you touch... India, the way you touch um, Russia, the way you touch South America, the way you touch your community in Bahia, Mississippi, the way you touch um, Texas and Arizona, and the way you touch uh, the world is to touch one person at a time. Do for one what you wish you could do for everybody. Um, and just love one another, that when he returns, he finds you doing that stuff. That's what makes you faithful. And that's what makes you wise. So, let me pray for you. Father, what, what worship there is in love being expressed God, help us to realize on a greater level the impact that our love, our, that our worship has when our love is expressed to you by loving one another. God, help us to, uh, God, help us to stop broadcasting opinions and demanding to be right. That just keeps echoing in my head. And help us love each other. Lord, put someone in front of us today that we can do something for. And in essence, can't change the whole world. We can change someone's world. Lord, I pray that we'd actively look for widows and orphans. Father, all the ones that looked for my widowed grandmother and this orphan. They changed everything. Not just for me, but the people I get to touch and minister to and, and feed the sheep. And those people that did that stuff for my mama in 1976, 77, 78, the 1980s, the 1990s, that helped raise me. love me. Lord, I pray that you'd call more people into the ministry of children. <clears throat> Not just the children, but the families of the children that we would co-labor together to help raise our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord so that when they grow, they will not depart. They may take different paths. They may find different struggles, but something is going to be there that constantly calls them back to the father, that constantly draws them back to the mother, that constantly turns the hearts of the children back to the fathers and mothers and vice versa, God. I pray that you'd call us to that. Father, I pray that while this dream we may all have to do something significant draws us towards an area in our life where we, we pass the tests of destiny, God, that in the eventuality you will, you will cause us to live in destiny. That's more important. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, do you love him? I'm going to ask you, do you love him? I know y'all love me. I feel it. I see it. I'm appreciated by you. But do you love him? No, I know you say it, and I know you feel it, and I know you think it. But love and worship is not something you think and something you say and something you feel. 
Worship is love expressed. Do you love him? Do you love him? Then feed his sheep. Bye, guys. Hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag shared. <sighs> Still have notes. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye. Share it out. See you tomorrow. Find a friend. Call a friend. Text a friend. Bring a friend. Bye-bye.